Vietnamese farmers tend their rice paddies. It's an image recreated in countless films. But for many of us, there is a darker association. Vietnam is synonymous with a war that ended 25 years ago. The cycle of rice sowing and planting goes on much as it did when the French forces arrived to colonize Vietnam in the 19th century. It was after the Second World War that Ho Chi Minh's Communist Party successfully ousted the French. His mausoleum in Hanoi represents to many Vietnamese the struggle both for independence and ultimately reunification. At Vietnam's Army Museum, there are triumphant reminders of the victory. Wreckage of US planes document the deadly air campaign waged against the Vietnamese. Over one Christmas period alone, B-52s flew 3,000 sorties against the North. Bombs rained down, killing hundreds. Lake Kim, central Hanoi, a place for two veterans of war to take in the view. Both are in their 80s and have lived through almost 30 years of continuous war in Vietnam. Trang Con Hu was decorated with Vietnam's highest medal for his service in the war against America. He was motivated by more than ideology. We fought against America in the war. Firstly, because we love our country, not for communism. We were led by our president, Ho Chi Minh. He was a man who loved our country, and the reason we fought was to be liberated. Nguyen Lee fought the French, surviving capture and imprisonment. The landscape he surveys today is very different from then. There are lots of changes in our country, many good changes. There are a lot of changes. We've put a great deal of effort into the country ourselves, and we've had help from other countries to have the good days like today. All the nations in the world are our friends. In just a decade, the cities and towns of Vietnam have been transformed. The collapse of the Soviet bloc, one of the main trading partners, led Vietnam's communist leaders to think the unthinkable. They relaxed the rigid economic controls. Policies of collectivization and nationalization have steadily been thrown away. Foreign investment has been encouraged. Diplomatic and economic links established with the United States. There is a new entrepreneurial spirit in the country. Businesses spring up every day. A population of over 70 million people has embraced consumerism. And top of many a list of priorities is a motorcycle. The Vietnamese have a passion for bikes, and a new car is out of reach for most people in a country where the average earnings per year don't exceed 400 US dollars. This motorcycle dealership was set up four years ago by a woman who saw the business potential in the huge increase in traffic on Hanoi streets. Now around 30 scooters a month leave the showroom. That's a turnover of some 90,000 US dollars. Na is a 28-year-old law graduate and is determined to cultivate the new attitudes. They're willing to, uh, when they can make money, they're willing to spend. They're willing to, uh, to, uh, to, to invest in their own business or they can join together to make a business. They can uh, learn a lot of uh, technology. They can learn the technology that they people teach. They can learn. In the countryside, the pace of change is slower. These brickworks have used the same techniques for decades. Everything in the process is done painstakingly by laborers, brick by brick. In many of Vietnam's traditional industries, there's a chronic lack of investment and too much bureaucracy. Vietnam can't compete with more efficient Asian neighbors. The government has come up with what it thinks may be a more immediate solution for the desperate quest for hard currency. Paddy fields are giving way to golf courses across the country. It would have seemed unthinkable 25 years ago that the favorite sport of many a capitalist in the West would be used to entice tourists. King's Island Golf Resort in the northeast of Vietnam employs 450 people. All its young caddies are women. 
Tria is a regular on the course. Each weekend, she does several circuits of the 18 holes. Instead of doing back-breaking work in the fields with her parents and eight brothers and sisters, she can take her earnings and tips back to her family. But she is worried the course isn't attracting enough foreigners. If there were more golf courses in Vietnam and more visitors came, then it would create more jobs here and make my job more secure. At the moment, I only work 15 days a month and I would like to work more. Golfers can tee off at five other major golf courses across Vietnam. But as yet, not enough golfing holidays have been taken up. The high cost of the tours and lack of transport links have been blamed. Those that play at Kings Island are almost all foreign workers based in Hanoi. The course is a joint venture owned by a Thai investor and the local tourist authorities. It's only now, some years after opening, that it's making money. Plans for other courses in the area have been shelved. Jim Lafrine works for an oil company, one of many multinationals, looking to try and exploit the natural resources of the country. Like the other expats, he pays 15,000 US dollars a year for the privilege of spending his weekends at the island. The club boasts 500 regular members. Only a few of those taking to the greens are Vietnamese. Few can afford the high price for access to the clubhouse. Though, as more people exploit the opportunities in Vietnam, membership is expected to widen. It is um, a bit ironic, I suppose, that uh, you know, after this uh, sort of class struggle over uh, 20 years ago, that you know we're here in Vietnam playing golf now. But uh, um, the the newness is sort of worn off, and and now I just uh, enjoy it. And I, I think uh, you see more and more Vietnamese playing. It's uh, it's really not. Um, only for the expatriates here in, in Vietnam. You see more and more, there are Vietnamese golf tournaments now. And uh, actually you see some, some pretty good Vietnamese golfers. With golf still only the preserve of the few, many Vietnamese have discovered tennis. Public courts are booked solidly for weeks on end. Sports shops are stocked full of equipment for those wanting to pick up a racket. Alongside the consumer boom has been the desire for more leisure time and more activities. The greater opportunities for both work and play in Vietnam's towns and cities is also proving tempting for the thousands of migrants from the countryside. Many are leaving their farms to seek the new opportunities working in foreign-owned factories. Vietnam is gradually shaking off its colonial past. It has jettisoned the communist economic policies that were so abhorrent to the Western powers 25 years ago. For all that the bright lights have replaced the communist banners, Vietnam remains a one-party state, with a little hint that the leadership wants to relax its hold on power. The country is overpopulated, and half its people live below the poverty line. Many Vietnamese say they won the war and lost the peace. Now they have the economic muscle, the consumers of the Socialist Republic may soon wonder whether political power will one day come their way.